What's going on, Savvy Family? Kellen here, and in today's video, I am talking about how car dealerships are ripping you off, taking your money, and seven tips that you can use to start avoiding it. So through my experience of being interviewed and actually getting positions at car dealerships, and also being with family and friends, going to dealerships to buy new cars, doing my research, here is how car dealerships are ripping you off. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna make sure I give you some tips and tricks to avoid it at all costs. So if you've ever been into a new car dealership and walked through the door before, you know the feeling. It's like a shark tank. You're jumping into a shark tank. There's sharks swimming all around you. You're gonna have three to four salesmen jumping on you right when you walk through the door to try to get your business, to try to make that sale that day, to try to meet their quota. Because the system's set up, the more rewards you get, including free vacations, car rentals, all this stuff, they have a reward system. So the more cars you sell, the more rewards you get, and they really push you to meet that quota. So the first thing they're gonna do is try to get you to come in, warm you up, uh, and start playing the game. It's all a game, they wanna get the sale. They're gonna butter you up, they're gonna get you your coffee, sit you down, get to know you, you know, have some small talk, get you kind of comforted down, and not have such a wall up. They wanna break down that wall um, and start to build that rapport with you. So they have you sat down, they, they know which car that you want, they have your trade-in value, so they start crunching the numbers with you in this four square. And this is the top one. This is gonna be your trade-in. This is gonna be the price of the new car. This is going to be your down payment. And this is gonna be your monthly payment. Now, believe it or not, most dealerships make most of their money, majority of their money through financing. They work very closely with other banks and they make their money through interest and financing a car. So when you come to a car dealership with cash or your own financing, they don't like that because that's not how they make most of their money. Most of their money is made through financing. So let's give an example here. We have a trade-in, say we have a 2010 Toyota Camry, very common car. Camry, it's got 150,000 miles on it. It's a piece of crap. Even though it's not, love to use cars, you could drive that thing another 150,000 miles. Okay, anyways, they're going to pick this thing apart. You bring it in, they're gonna look it over. They're gonna be pointing out every single ding, every single scratch, telling you the tires are crap, that the brakes need done, that it needs a lot of work. It's a negotiation. This whole process is a big negotiation. It's a big game to get you out the door in a new car, financed um, so that they can make more money and take in your used car and flip it for pro probably double the profit. So. In this trade-in value, they're gonna point out all the things, your Toyota Camry 2010, we're gonna say they offer you $2,500 trade-in credit. Now, if you were to go to kellybluebook.com, you can type in your car for free and look exactly how much that car is worth if you were to sell it privately on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist um, or to a family or friend. That car is worth $5,000 all day. If you obviously chump it up, you, 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 you know, touch up paint, you vacuum it out, you do a good posting, you can get $5,000 for that, no problem. So right off the bat, you're losing $2,500 by being lazy and doing a trade-in versus taking the time to list it yourself and sell it yourself privately. Anyways, so this is what they're setting up for you. The price of the new Camry, we're gonna say $25,000. We're gonna keep the numbers super simple here. Say you have a down payment is $3,000 that you can put towards it. So your monthly payments, we're gonna say $500 at 60 months. We're gonna say 475 at 72 months, and then we'll do 450 at 84 months. Granted, this is seven years. All right, so they want you walking away happy. They're gonna, they wanna know what you want for your monthly payment. Um, you have 3,000 down. They're gonna start working with these numbers, and they wanna focus in this section of the quadrant of the four squares, because this section, this is, a, this is what the new car costs. They can't really change that much. They get the car for what it is. They're gonna have to sell it for what it is. Um, the trade-in value, they're gonna try to give you the lowest amount possible so they can fix the car up and flip it. Um, so they want you to focus on your monthly payments, which they can pretty much manipulate any way they want. You either pay a ton up front in your down payment and your monthly payment goes down, or you pay almost next to nothing in your monthly payment or your down payment and your monthly payment goes up. So they can fluctuate that however you want, um, but it's all impacting your finances either way. But they wanna focus down here. So car dealerships make most of their money, like I said, through financing. They wanna partner with banks and they wanna get you financed for as long as possible to make you pay as much interest as possible. Absolutely screwing you over and screwing your financial future over. Number two is the service department where they charge an astronomical amount per hour if you were to go to a regular mechanic, you're paying around 70 bucks an hour. Dealerships are at least $150 per hour to work on your car. 
their parts are way more expensive. Um, yes, it's better service. You get to go sit in the nice lobby with music and Wi-Fi and get your free coffee and snacks, but you're paying for it um, versus going to a local mechanic. The third way is add-ons. So getting you your floor mats, getting you your extended warranties. Um, that's the stuff after you sign on the dotted line and you go back to the office manager that he's gonna try to upsell you all that stuff because that's how they make a lot of their money as well. Now to decipher between how much they make on used cars versus new cars in my research, uh, when I was on the computer researching, on new cars they make about 6%, not very much. On used cars, they can make around 12%. So almost double what they make on new cars, they can make on used cars. Obviously, the uh, the actual price of those cars di differentiate quite a bit, but they make a lot more money on used cars than new cars. They'd much rather sell used cars all day. New cars, they get them from the manufacturer, the price is what it is, and they have to sell them. So most of their money comes from the financing, from screwing people over and getting them in a long-term financial deal um, where they're paying interest on a depreciating asset. It's losing value every day, but we'll get into that. All right, so they got you sat down, they got your down payment, they got your monthly payment. You really wanna get around that $300 a month, which everybody seems to want. Um, so you tell them, how do we get to $300 a month? Um, this down payment, I don't really have $3,000 either. They come back to you with these numbers to kind of, just like a negotiation, they're gonna start as high as they possibly can and start to work their way down. They give themselves room to work, wiggle room. So say you, you only have $2,000, he can say, I can go back to the boss, see if we can get it down to $2,000. He's a great guy, he's in a good mood today, maybe, maybe he'll work with you. Um, these payments are all gonna change. They're all gonna go up, obviously, um, if you're going with a, with a lower down payment, but we'll see what we can do, see if we can get you that, that $300 to $400 range. So he goes back to the boss, they, they sit back there and chit chat for a couple minutes, um, and he comes back super happy, he got you, he got you a great deal. He, he convinced his boss that he's giving you a good deal and he's gonna get you in that new car today. So they got you, uh, let's say he couldn't get you down to 300, uh, or 350, but he can do he can do 399 a month. Okay, and it's over 84 months, so we're talking seven years, 399 a month, financing away your future. Um, but just sign on this dotted line here. It's only 399 a month. You get a brand new car. You're walking away today. We can give you the keys. Only a $2,000 down payment. We're not going to worry about getting screwed um, from your trade-in value or anything like that, um, or, or anything like that. So just sign here. We're good to go. He worked with you, uh, he got you the car that you wanted, you lost the negotiation, he played with the numbers, you're walking away financing a new car for seven years of your life, um, paying crazy amount of interest. And when you sign it, that's the thing they want, you, want to get you to do is to sign on the dotted line because when you do that, it's kind of a commitment. You can still back out of the contract, obviously, you're not handing over payments or anything like that, but just psychologically, when you sign on the dotted line, that's kind of committing to them, it's committing to yourself that you are going to purchase the car, that, that uh, you're gonna feel guilty if you tried to back out of it, so signing on the dotted line is kind of like your, your coffin. Um, where you're in it for the long haul and you're gonna commit to it. And this is the part that really pisses me off about car dealerships is, most people walking into car dealerships, new car dealerships are actually pretty broke people. They're not very good with their money. They have no idea how to crunch numbers themselves. Um, they're easily swindled and taken advantage of. Um, and it's really sad to see because that's the people that they prey on. That's the people they hope come into the dealership so they can get them in a brand new car, get them financed, make as much money off of them as possible. They don't really give a crap about your financial situation or anything like that, honestly. And they, they probably don't. I'm sure that there's car salesmen out there that are absolutely incredible people. Um, they're good Christian, honest people, and they're just trying to make a good living for their family. But for the most part, we all know car dealerships are pretty sleazy. They're, they're just trying to take advantage of people and get them into newer, nicer cars for more financing and more debt in their life. All right, so now that you know what it's like to walk into the dealership and to get screwed over, to get, in, to get screwed over by your trade-in, to get screwed over by the monthly payment, the down payment, the financing, let's talk about how you can actually avoid this how you can get into nice cars without being screwed by new car dealerships. All right, let's talk about the seven ways now that you can avoid getting screwed over by the car dealerships. And the first one is stop buying new cars altogether. Uh, I don't know what happened in today's society, but the push to get newer, nicer, everything is absolutely absurd. Um, it's really hurting your financial future. I think purchasing, excuse me. Okay. Purchasing new cars is one of the worst financial mistakes you can make in your lifetime. It really sets you back years upon years upon years of creating wealth, creating a financial freedom, um, just trying to impress others, trying to look the best you can by being in that nice new truck or that nice new SUV. Um, 
It's really a bad financial decision. If you look at the numbers, it's plain stupid to buy a new car. Cars depreciate. The moment you drive it off the lot, it's worth thousands of dollars less than what you just paid for it. So you're literally, like that, losing thousands of dollars. Over the first three to five years of a car's life, it loses up to 60% of its value. So it depreciates 60%. That's like giving someone $20,000 knowing that in five years, you're only gonna get 40% of it back. It's, it's just a very stupid financial decision to continue to buy new cars and continue to finance your life away. So instead of you taking on that debt, taking on that depreciation, why not let someone else do that? This is why I'm making the video to try to get people to prevent them from doing that. You can buy a nice used car that's well-maintained, that's reliable, that's a couple years old, that you totally avoid the dealership and all their crazy fees and tactics, and you buy it privately, um, you can bring it to a mechanic to make sure it's a nice sound vehicle, and you, lose, you don't lose out on the depreciation either. So it's a win-win-win all around. Cars are really a triple whammy when it comes to your finances. If you're buying them new, you're financing them, so you are going into debt, you're paying interest on them. You are also paying for the depreciation. Since you're buying brand new, you are losing the value of the car. It's not gaining value. It's not an investment. You're losing money every time you drive it. Um, and you have to maintain it. So three things. It, it's just a mmm. Chill, chill. It sucks. Uh, cars absolutely blow when it comes to trying to grow wealth. They're just a money pit. They get you from point A to point B and people need to realize that's what they do. That's the importance of a car, their transportation. They get you from point A to point B. You don't need to fall into the trap of needing the, the bells and whistles and all of the toys inside the car. Um, having the nicest, newest car in the neighborhood or with your friends, uh, don't fall into that trap. All right, number two is if you are going to go into a new car dealership and you're set in your ways, you want a new car, go in with your own financing. Go to your local credit union, your local bank beforehand, uh, get pre-approved, get a lower interest rate than trying to sign up at the dealership and letting them do your financing for you. You will save thousands and thousands of dollars in interest and in hassle by already doing that ahead of time. Um, buying a car is a huge purchase, just like buying a house. You want to get pre-approved ahead of time. You want to get your finances in order before you go in and start looking for the cars. Um, it's just going to make the stress a lot less. You're not going to feel so rushed and you're not going to be taken advantage of. Number three is remember that it is a negotiation. So whether you're buying a used car or a new car, it's all about the negotiation. It's a game. You want to get into a nicer, newer car with as little money as possible. And in order to do that, you need to hold some of your cards in your hand. Don't go into the dealership, tell them right away that you have a trade-in, that you have your own financing, anything that. Keep your cards close to yourself. Let them figure things out. Let them show their cards before you show all of yours. Um, you wanna have a little bit of leverage in the negotiation. So if you have a trade-in, let them work the numbers without the trade-in. Let them work these numbers first. And then once they come back to you, tell them, hey, I got a 2010 Toyota Camry that I'm willing to trade in as well that we can throw into the deal. Um, but I really need some work on these numbers. Yeah, boy! And be smart. You know, do the numbers before you go in. Don't, don't be surprised and, and get taken advantage of by not doing the numbers, which is simple math. Uh, do that ahead of time. But number three is really knowing and understanding that buying a new or used car is a negotiation and go into it with a game plan. Hold your cards close, keep some leverage, and, and you'll be in a much better shape. All right, number four is don't fall for their games. Like I said, when you walk into a dealership or a furniture store, it's like jumping into a shark tank. The salesmen are on you right away. You, you wanna have a stone cold face. You don't wanna be this person that is like, yeah, help me out, I'm buying a new car today, I'm excited, I'm pumped. Like, play your cards right, go in knowing that it's a game, knowing that they're gonna try and take advantage of you and try to get the sale that day. Um, so just be patient, understand it's a game, have your guard up, um, and be ready. Number five, stop being lazy. A lot of people buy new cars and do trade-ins and get screwed because they're simply lazy. Uh, they, they don't wanna go through the hassle of selling their car privately or buying a car privately, um, which is a shame because we've done it our entire life. We've had so much luck. We've never had huge issues with our cars that we've bought and used. The car we have now is a 2013 Honda Pilot with 165,000 miles on it. That's our daily commuter, that's our family car. It runs like a champ. It's got some rust coming on it, it's got some scratches, but we don't care because it's reliable and it doesn't cost us any money. We paid for it in cash. We don't have any financing, we're not in debt because of the car, um, and that's truly the way you wanna be. Like I said, this is a topic I'm super passionate about. Please, if you're getting value, hit the thumbs up. I appreciate it, getting this message out to more people. 
Um, but yeah, if you want more videos on cars and, and reducing your expenses with cars and buying used cars, financing, all that stuff, comment below. I'd be happy to extend this and make more value out of it. And before I move on to the next one, this is, goes for everything personal finance and in life. People that are lazy get taken advantage of. People that are aware and are continuing to educate themselves and being proactive instead of reactive, those are the people that win in life. So stop being lazy. There's no problem with buying used cars. There's no problem with selling your car on your own. Do it. You're gonna save a ton of money. All right, number six, to avoid getting screwed over by a car dealership is understand after they sit you down, they get all the numbers correct, you sign on the dotted line, you go back to the finance manager to make it a final deal. He's gonna try to upsell you. Avoid the upsells. You don't need the extended warranty. You don't need the added on floor mats for $300 when you can buy them on Amazon for 20. You don't need the added on uh, maintenance and free oil changes, all that stuff. No, God, please, no. Obviously ask for that stuff. Ask for all the free stuff you possibly can and tell them that you need that stuff in order to make the deal today. But don't sign up for all these extra things that are just gonna cost you an extra five bucks a month. Five bucks a month for a warranty or five bucks a month for the floor mats or, or the upgraded navigation system. That's over seven years. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. Um, by rolling it in and financing it into a long-term finance plan. Uh, it doesn't seem like that much up front, but in the long term, you're, you're absolutely paying for it and you're paying interest on it, so avoid it. All right, number seven is go in with a friend or family member and be okay with walking away. So, like I said, I don't advise going into a new car dealership. I always advise buying used. Even if you're buying used, you should always bring a friend or a relative or your spouse along. You don't wanna be there by yourself making your own decisions, because you can get caught up in your emotions. I'm a very emotional person. Um, I get caught up in my emotions, so it's nice to have someone else there to kind of check you and just say, hey, uh, you know, when they're going back to the financial manager and you're super excited about making the deal and everything, the person can say, hey, we can walk away. We can come back tomorrow and do this. You should never make the decision that day. Uh, you should really research the cars, make sure you're getting the one that you want, make sure you have the financing in place if you need it uh, ahead of time and all that stuff. But having someone else there is super important uh, so that you don't get wrapped up and getting taken advantage of by riding on your emotions. So bring someone along, let them be part of the journey um, and you'll, be, you'll make a much better, wiser financial decision. All right, so that's the video. If you found it valuable, please smash that thumbs up button. It's greatly appreciated. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe below. We have many more videos coming out. I want you to stay savvy, stay sexy, and we'll see you on the next one.